Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story. Rude pushy salesman breaks my spirit and I buy competing car. BF shows contract to manager. The second story. The buyer wanted to steal the unpaid goods but screwed up. The third story. Someone parked in my spot, which I cleared of snow. On to the first story. Tried to push me so hard into his sale that he pushed me next door. A few years ago when I was a very shy person, still starting to grow into adulthood and doing things on my own, I was in need of a new car. I was finally working a decently paying job and had a second job just for fun. I did my research and I was interested in the Chevy Spark, so I did the only sensible thing and went to the Chevy dealership to test drive one. My BF and I walked in together, but he went off to do his own looking, as it was my car and my decision. As soon as I was alone, a salesman comes right up to help me. I tell him that I was looking to a test drive a Spark, and he leads me to his desk. He immediately jumps into what my current car is worth, what my credit is like, how much I want to pay, etc. About halfway through the production, I stop him. I tell him that I just wanted to test drive the car, and there was no point in trying to figure out the financing if I didn't even know if I'd like it. He asked me point blank if I was looking to buy a car that day, and I said I didn't know. He then just tells me, well if you're not looking to buy a car today, I don't really want to help you. He tells me to wait as he gets up to greet other customers. Obviously I didn't wait. I just got up, found the BF and told him we had to leave. I'm a little crushed, my confidence is shaken, and I relay the story to the BF on the way out. He's fuming but decides to keep his thoughts to himself. He suggests we go to the Mini dealership nearby. Minis are my dream car so he knew it would cheer me up. Well after a little time looking around the show floor talking to a very nice and helpful saleswoman who didn't bring up financing at all until I did, I signed for a new Mini. I wasn't picking it up until the final week so BF was still driving me home. He took a weird route and turned back into the Chevy dealership. He said one second and grabbed some of the papers out of my hand as he went inside. Apparently he went in, stormed into the manager's office and put the contract on the manager's desk. He relayed what the previous salesman said to me and showed her that they missed out on a sale. He apparently had a history of these events and the manager said that it wouldn't happen again. We will fix everything, but it was too late. I guess I don't know if anything came of it, but I hope at least he got a good chewing out. Yeah, that manager lost a big sale, so he definitely got scolded or fired. Not only is he a jerk, he's just not very good at his job. You have to convince people to buy as a salesman, not just hope that people who really want to buy happen to come in. Car salespeople may be jerks, but that doesn't mean everyone is a jerk. A former executive recounted his experience with a car salesman. He was dressed modestly, ripped jeans, torn t-shirt, etc., but had money to buy a car. He didn't like to brag about his money because it wasn't the most important thing to him. When he came to get his car, the salesman wouldn't even talk to him. Eventually, he walked into the manager's office, showed a wad of cash and said he lost the deal today. He also bought his car from another dealer. Big mistake. Big. Huge. In the end, he was happy with that purchase. The second story is, Shoplifter gets what's coming. Background. So I used to work at one of those large retail home improvement stores as a cashier, and one day I messed up pretty bad. On this one super busy Saturday, I had been assigned to be at the customer service desk, and since I was fairly new, I wasn't exactly sure what to do when an angry or suspicious customer came up to the desk. Usually when you suspect people of trying to return stolen merchandise, you'd call over your manager and they would tell the customer that we weren't going to take those items back. However, on this fateful Saturday, I found myself in that situation and I panicked. The Act I had been doing well with no hiccups at the customer service desk, and I was getting the hang of all the duties. There had just been a rush of customers, and my area around my register was quite messy. I was trying to organize everything before another wave of people came in. That's when this very large ghetto and overall unpleasant lady came around the corner with a cart filled with the largest and most expensive cans of wood stain that we sold. My suspicions were already up since she came around the wrong way and not through the front entrance. She makes eye contact with me and slowly lugs her heavy cart up to my register. Now this B then starts to tell me this BS story about how she had left over stain from a project and that she didn't have a receipt but she would gladly give me her driver's license and take a store credit. At this point, I tell her I need to call a manager to get an override for a return of that amount, but when I try to call their phone, they wouldn't answer. I called one of the head cashiers next. The head cashiers were basically glorified cashiers who told people to go to their lunches and breaks, 
and told him I have to get an override for a return of over $100. He simply replied, okay, I'll be right there and hung up. Now this ghetto bee starts to get all flustered and tells me I need to hurry up. I scan all the stain in her cart and the total came out to be 63648. But in order for me to put in on a merchandise card, I had to get that override from my head cashier. He came around the corner looking, rushed and held out his card for me to scan. I tried to signal to him that this lady was suspicious as F, but surprisingly he didn't catch my subtle gestures. I opened my eyes wide and raised my eyebrows. I was too worried about insulting this bee so I didn't say anything. I got the override and gave her the merchandise card and she quickly left. My revenge. As soon as she got out of the doors, I called the paint department and asked them to check how many cans of that stain they had on hand. Sure enough, they had less than what our inventory now said. I double checked and asked the associates back there if they had seen anyone take any of the stain off the shelf earlier that day. They confirmed my suspicions. That bee had taken them off the shelves and returned them. I was pretty upset. I was thinking I was going to get written up for the first time for making such a stupid mistake. Feeling defeated, I went back to cleaning up my area as I wait for a manager to come by so I can tell them of what just happened. Then by some random happenstance, I look down next to my register by the phone and see a loan merchandise card. The cards are usually in a pile on top of my register, so I pick this one up and look at the back to see if it had been used. Sure enough, the security code had been peeled off, which meant it had been activated. My heart started racing. I grabbed the card and went to check the system to see if that was the card I put the return on. I swipe the card and up on the screen pops the remaining balance 63648. Somehow I had grabbed an empty merchandise card on accident and gave that to the ghetto B. I gleefully go to the purchase screen and ring up the same items and use the card and rebought the stain, so our store sustained no loss. My day went on and I had no other problems until the same ghetto B comes storming up to my register again. This time she looked livid as hell and started yelling at me with vengeance. Apparently she had tried to buy some top line power drills with her card but somehow there was nothing on it. I was thrilled I had the chance to get a redo with this bee, and so I made sure I wasn't going to screw this one up. I look at her dead in the eye and make up the best BS story I could think of at the time. Ma'am, after you had left we checked the security cameras, and it seemed that you had taken those items off the shelf and never paid for them in the first place. We were able to call the credit center and take back the money that you stole. We have all your driver's license info, and you won't be able to do any more returns with any of our stores without the loss prevention being notified. At this point, she screamed at me. You did what? Then she turned around and stormed out of the store, huffing loudly to herself. Further justice. I told my manager about it and he couldn't help but laugh and commented me on not effing up any further. He called our sister's stores around the area and told them about a potential shoplifter that may come in. They always do that when there's someone trying to steal a lot of merchandise. And the next day when I arrived at work, I was informed that the same lady tried to push out a cart with several hundred dollars worth of stuff from one of our sister stores and was promptly arrested because they knew she was going to try something like that. I hate shoplifters and I'm glad she got what she deserved. You are very lucky she left that card because you could have been fined. I have a friend who works at a hardware store in a rundown area of my town and he hates working with returns because almost every one of them is a dude returning something they stole. I recently watched a TV show about shoplifters. This store was talking about a shoplifter they had. This guy went right to the back of the store where they sold motorcycles. He then rolled the motorcycle up to the entrance and then turned to the return counter and asked the employee for a refund. The employee apologized and said she couldn't without a receipt. He looked in his wallet and D. I think he forgot the receipt at home. So he walked out of the store with his motorcycle and no one blinked an eye until security footage was reviewed that night. Store clerks, be careful that something like this doesn't happen to you, even though it's ridiculous. The last story is nothing like a blizzard revenge. First, a little background. This was a few years ago when I was a senior in college. I had moved into a townhouse with a disproportionately small open parking lot behind the row of townhomes. I'm talking gravel with space enough for perhaps five cars. You did require a pass, but our landlord had given out far too many for the lot size. Ah, <sighs> and the next housing over had a fence leaning into the lot. So if a car did not pull forward far enough once parked, you could not drive around them to park. I drove a 4x4 SUV at the time, so routinely I parked partly in the grass to allow for more room for the smaller cars. This was also a troublesome lot when it snowed, and boy did it snow up there, which is what begins my terror reign on my D-nozzle neighbors. Story time. Bear with me, it's a long one. I had just finished up with finals for the fall semester and was waiting on my aunt to drive to my complex from a couple states over so we could make the rest of the journey for the holidays to my parents' house together to save on gas money. 
This was when it was around 3.98 a gallon. However, a blizzard had started up and the weather was quickly becoming treacherous. I waited until the thick of it was mostly over, before I went out with a shovel to clear a spot for my aunt's two-wheel drive car in the lot, so her car would be safe while we were away. I spent two hours in the freezing snow making room for her. While not law, obviously, generally the rule is you dug it out, it's yours. Well, not long after I got a call from my mom saying my aunt had run out of gas because of traffic stopping with no stations in sight. So I loaded up two cans and headed out into the storm. It was now passing farther east and she was stuck in it. She wasn't far away, but it was 45 minutes just to get her due to the condition of the roads. Minor tangent, if you're going downhill and the road is empty, you can pull the e-brake and have some fun sliding sideways. <laughs> so I get to her and fill her up, and we head back with her following my tracks. Fast forward, we're pulling up to my lot. I gave her my pass and I was just going to park on the street. And this a-hole has taken the spot I dug out. She was the only car there, as everyone else had already gone home for the holidays. She could have parked anywhere else. She also had parked far enough back to block the entire rest of the lot. So my aunt parks on the street, and I let her in the house to get warm. But I'm peeved. What kind of jerk does this? Suddenly I realized I'm the only one with a shovel here, and a dark idea begins to take shape in my mind. You want that spot so badly? Fine, take it, it's yours forever. I grab my shovel, it's dark by now and head outside. I carefully shovel all the snow I had dug out back around their car. For good measure I add snow from around most of the rest of the lot. I have buried their entire car up over the trunk and hood. I feel accomplished and over the cover of darkness, take my shovel back inside and wait for the morning. The next day I hear angry cursing and rush to my kitchen window to look out back. My neighbor is furiously trying to get in their car and then trying to back out of their snow hell. I make coffee and sip it giggling while they realize they'll have to still dig their car out and since they have no shovel, they have to do it with their hands. Never take a spot someone else worked hard to shovel out. They eventually did get free and I made a new shovel space right away from my aunt. We had a lovely holiday with my parents and where there was no snow after. How long did you leave to pick up your aunt? If not long, then I understand your pain. Not parking in a spot cleared by someone else makes absolute sense. You have to shovel your own snow in order to get a spot. Wouldn't it be great if you went outside and told the owner of the car that you had a snow shovel and they could borrow it, but unfortunately it broke? Oh, that's a shame. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a nice day.